Hello, I'm Phil Dibb from Compliance News. Thank you for subscribing. It's the 18th of December 2019 and I want to go through a few slides on a couple of areas which are topical at the present time. First of all, the FCA are particularly active in the DB transfer area. I'm going to go through seven hot topics which they are asking firms for further information. We also await the policy statement from the FCA on the banning, potential banning of contingent charging. This policy statement is due out very soon. Other areas, the PI market is particularly difficult at the moment, so please do work with your PI broker and give them plenty of time. You also need to be aware that they are applying, or possibly may be applying, higher excesses and exclusions on your policy. This may affect your financial resources. MIFID is an ongoing issue for IFAs as people work towards annual suitability and annual disclosure of costs, wrap costs, fund costs and so on. PROD, Product Due Diligence, has been highlighted by the issues caused by Neil Woodford and his fund managers. Please do look at the link on the email and that will give you plenty of information regarding the due diligence and the FCA requirements. Also on the update email there is some information about the changes to Gabriel, slight we expect and hope during 2020. Just as a reminder, limitation of liability, this has been in the press over the last six to eight weeks regarding firms adding something to their retail client agreement. Claims management regulation came in in the early part of 2019, so it's important that if you are involved in that area, you are getting the correct permissions. For example, if you are working on a contingency basis with a client, if you are assisting them with a complaint. It is quite a detailed area, so you need to consider the correct permissions. Forums. We run a range of regulatory forums during the year. Please attend, if you can, the next one, the 9th of January 2020 in central London near Tower Gateway. DB transfers. This slide talks through some of the topics which the FCA have been asking a number of firms about. We think between 1,000 and 1,700 firms have received letters from the FCA. Volume of transfers, if you've been doing high figures, how are you making sure that those cases are suitable? If you've been doing low figures and a very low volume, how are your advisors maintaining their competence? Conversion rates. The FCA are not wanting everybody who walks through your door with a DB transfer inquiry to turn into a client who transfers their DB scheme. So what are your conversion rates? I expect the FCA are wanting them to be lower rather than higher. Some people are thinking about 20 to 25% conversion rate. Insistent clients, the FCA have been challenging a few firms on the number of insistent clients. Income from DB business, this is a debatable area, mainly because it depends on your niche and your area of expertise. However, if this is a high percentage, the FCA have been challenging firms. Unauthorised introducers, this is something that the FCA are asking more questions about. Transfers per pension transfer specialist. Have you got enough people in your organisation with G60, AF3, AF7 and so on? Expensive solutions. A bit of a bone of contention at many firms because most stakeholder contracts, if any, uh, they do not allow individuals to go into drawdown and they do not allow certain uh, wide range of funds, fund selection, uh, but the FCA have reminded firms of their obligations regarding stakeholder charging. The senior management and certification regime, this started a few days ago on the 9th of December 2019. Three key elements, first of all, who's going to be holding the senior manager function position, SMF, that should be showing on your own register now. Certification, how are you going to be certifying your advisors, mortgage advisors and other similar staff? Conduct rules, how will you be training your staff on these areas? Compulsory 
by the end of next year. Just as a reminder, the four prescribed responsibilities. The first one, who's the oversight when it comes to your regulatory obligations for the senior manager's regime. Number two, who's in charge of certification, your obligations there, seen by many as the one with the issue, most issues attached to it. Number three, who's going to make sure that you carry out your obligations in respect of the conduct rules training. And number four, in respect of financial crime. All those should have been divvied up and the individuals at your firm each having a statement of responsibility for those senior managers. Some areas here for certification, typically advisors and mortgage advisors, similar to an SPS, fit and proper declarations being completed, again similar to completing a long form A which have been used for years by FCA authorised firms. The senior managers are certifying the individual and it's certainly brand new for mortgage advisors similar to what CF30s have been going through for a number of years. Yes, you get an annual certificate and at this point you are now able to start inputting information onto the new FCA's directory. We understand that Although you can input information now, it will not be live on the directory until December 2020. But we expect some possible changes from the regulator there. Code of Conduct Rules. All members of staff should have been issued with this, 48 pages. We are also going to update our complaint handling and whistleblowing documents which are attached to the email. Do you have a plan at your firm, in particular, who's holding the senior manager functions, the prescribed responsibilities, who's going to be certified and who's going to be trained on the conduct rules? Typically that would be all the staff within your firm, you may exclude the cleaner. This slide shows the five individual conduct rules. If you have a look in this document, in section 2.1, that will go through them. This slide goes through the individual rules for senior managers. Section 2.2 of the Code of Conduct Rules will give you additional information. Code of Conduct Rules, be aware of these areas, such as treating customers fairly, proper complaints handling, acting with integrity, complying with FCA requests, managing conflicts of interest, reporting disciplinary action. This slide covers some of the typical issues individuals must be aware of when considering the Code of Conduct Rules. This slide focuses on section 4.2 of the Conduct Rules, in particular obligations of senior managers. Attached to the slides is a quick quiz on the Code of Conduct. We recommend that all staff complete this. From the team at Compliance News, we're very grateful for your subscription this year. Please do keep subscribing. We wish everybody a very happy Christmas and a healthy and prosperous 2020. Thank you. See everyone next year.